Hey guys, this is Brian with Bstride DIY. This is from Xtool. It's the D7W Smart Diagnostic System. It has full OBD function, full system diagnostic, bidirectional control, quick access to special functions. And here's what it looks like here. Let's go ahead and open it up. It comes in its own carrying case. And the case feels pretty sturdy here. That's pretty impressive. All right, so this is what it looks like here. We've got the instructions and the packing list here. This looks like the charging cable right here. It's a USB-C charging cable, so that's nice. Comes with the different blocks here as far as the chargers. Looks like a block charger here and it has the fold-away prongs. This is the VCI box and this will plug into the OBD input on your car. And that should be like under your steering wheel. I'll show you that in just a second. All right, and this would be the tablet I'm assuming here. So this is pretty cool. I, <laughs> I mean, it's probably been a decade, at least a decade, but I remember I took my car once to get the code read and it costed, I think it cost me a hundred dollars. I mean, they don't do that now anymore because you can go to AutoZone, Advanced Auto Parts, and they'll let you know what it is for free. But just looking back on that, it makes me mad. I just kind of went in. They said, oh, we'll read the code for $100. I said, oh, that's great. So this is what it looks like here. And this is what you do is you, there's a power button right up top here. You hold this down. And this turns on. I'm kind of excited about this. I do like the, the look of it. It's got like this rugged kind of look with especially on the edges here. This is like a rubber side on both these edges. So that's really cool. Let me know in the comments if you have any diagnostic tools and what you think. And guys, look at this. This is really cool. On the back here, it has this stand. So you can go ahead and set it up like this. So it has this nice stand in the back you can use. If you just want to kind of stand it up and say show the customer or show someone, you know, this is what we're looking at. Or if you're busy working on something, you're trying to diagnose a code, you can just use the stand like that. And then it just goes back, folds back in like that. So this is the main dashboard here for Xtool. It basically shows you the diagnostic. We'll do the auto scan in a minute. Special functions, remote control, updates. Here you can press that and it's going to update for each car. That's I'm, That might take a while, so I'm not going to do that right now. And then Xtool here. I think that brings you to the website. First, I want to show you the special functions. So these are all the special functions. There's quite a few of them here. A lot of them you may never use. It just depends on what kind of work you're doing on the car. So right here we have key programming. Once you select this, you just is a disclaimer saying Xtool is not responsible for changes made on the vehicle. Has all the different vehicles, Audi, Acura, and then you go down the list here. And we'll go ahead and go back instrument cluster same kind of disclaimer and then you click this and it's going to ask you to hook up the remote tool to your car there power balance seat calibration tpms reset i know that's a big one sometimes after you get a tire replaced eprom language change transport mode control unit reset bms reset throttle rain light sensor af reset hf HB battery, gearbox match, ABS bleeding, gear learning, clutch adapter, SAS, oil reset. That's probably a common one. Headlight, AC relearn, SRS, windows initializ in initialization, injector coating, suspension, airbag reset, tire refit. So let's go ahead and go back. And so what you do is you take this diagnostic module here. And you're going to fit it. Sometimes it's under here near the steering wheel, but on my car it's over here. So I'll show you where this is. So you can see it right here. And it's just going to go in right in here. So this will go in like so. So that's hooked in there now. You can kind of see that. It's hooked and we're going to come back to the machine here. All right, so once you have the VCI plugged in, you can press auto scan. It's going to try to search and scan for the VCI and make sure it's connected to the OBD port here. And it's saying prompt update VCI firmware. So it's downloading, downloading the firmware here. It's giving me a beep over there. It says auto scan connecting. 
I'm guessing beeping is good. It says, please wait the communication. Okay, so it's given me vehicle information here. And you go to connector type. It's a 16 pin. You know, we're communicating again. And automatic scan. All systems scan. And it's going through all the systems here and checking for any error codes, basically. So it's... I don't have any error codes, so I kind of wish I did so I could show you this. But if it did, it would pop up, and then you would click Diagnostic over here, and it would give you information over there. Okay, it says one electric power steering. It says faulty. So we'll click on that and see what that is in just a second. It's still scanning. And this is nice because right here you can see it's only 23 of 57. You can pause it, which is what I might do in a second, to just see what this is about. But... It's going through tire pressure monitoring system, power control, active control mount. It's basically going through the whole vehicle and just checking for codes. Okay, so that was actually quicker than I thought. So we're all done here. We can go back up. Let's go up to right up here where it says electric power steering, EPS. It says power supply voltage of control unit. We'll click diagnostic. And let's see what that's going to do. It says communicating. And it gives you all these issues here. Read trouble code, clear trouble code, live data, special functions, actuation, actuation test, and all this info here. I'm not a mechanic, so I'm just kind of looking through these and just kind of seeing what these show here. So trouble code 1102, power supply voltage of control unit. You can click on info here. And this is just what it's saying. Possible unit power supply voltage, possible failure, open an IG1 signal harness, ECU failure, test condition continuously, fail safe action, restrict access. And it just tells you all about this. So that's pretty nice. It would have helped me when I had my issue when I would have had to pay $100 to see what the code was. All kinds of information here when you run this live test, it goes through all your car systems and you can click report here and if you need to print this out or at least save it here you can do that it gives you a report of the faulty code 16 pin connector all system scan it says fault codes and it shows the shows the one here power supply voltage of control unit one alert and then everything else looks good and you can save this so i'll go ahead and save it and then you put in the information of the vehicle. Hot system scan. Let's see what that does. So that goes through the 10 systems here. Engine, transmission, ABS, body electrical, supplementary, restraint system, electric power steering, immobilizer, and meter. Let's go to TPMS reset here. And that's the tire pressure monitoring system. I know sometimes that'll get stuck on the system even after, after you change the tire or put new air in the tire and it might have to be reset. Rather than going to the dealer, this might be a better option here. So this is really cool and you can go to reports here. So let's see report. That's the one I saved earlier here. You can open that up and show whoever you need to the report. You can print it, you can share by email. So that's really cool. Data playback, data view. And this is pretty cool because this is the front page and it's basically like a tablet here. So I would assume the one you're going to use most, I just press down here. That's the X tool. You also have a camera function here. You can access the camera. So you can take pictures of things. Let's go ahead and take a picture here. Um, let's take a picture with this button here of my shoes. And then it's saved up here. So you can have pictures there. If you want to take a picture of the faulty issue going on. Let's go back to home. You can have contacts. You have access to email. Music. You can use a sound recorder. That's pretty cool. Um, if there's like a, a belt or an issue like that, you can access that. It's got a calculator. That's always nice. Let's go back to the home. ES File Explorer. I guess you can download files onto this. So this is really cool. 
I can think of a lot of uses for that. Like if someone sends you an invoice or you need to use that. It's got Adobe Acrobat, Quick Support Diagnosis. I'm guessing this is the X tool. Yeah, that just brings you back to the X tool here. And then you've got Gallery, Video, Explore, and Chrome. So you can also access the internet with this, which is cool. So if you need to look something up, you can access the internet as well. I really like the, the shape of this as well. On the sides, it's kind of got this rugged design. So if you drop it, there's, you know, it's not going to harm it. And this is another, this looks like where the charging port is here. We're going to, that's the USB-C where you need to charge it. Like I started this off at 69%. I can't see the percentage here. <clears throat> but this is pretty cool. I would definitely recommend it if you need to, you know, if you work on cars at home or if you're a mechanic, you know, items like that, this would be a great addition. And it has so many different features that I could assume that you would need to use. And some that I can think I can use in the future if a code pops up or if I just need to run a scan if I suspect something.